Hey you guys, I was having trouble coming up with new ideas, so that's why I'm a little late giving bringing out this new blog here. I figured for this one, I just came back from writing club, so I figured I'd share one of the pieces I wrote tonight. Well, the, the only piece I wrote tonight. And I, I haven't really come up with a title yet, but I know that with my teacher, she asked us to, the leader of the club, she said, take one of these lines on this piece of paper and write something starting with one of those lines. So that's what I'm going to try tonight. That's what I'm going to try now, see how it works. Uh, the lines I was given the opportunity to choose between were, at first glance, she couldn't even. When I approached her, I wasn't sure. I did not know it yet, but the last time I saw her was... As if to test me, she greeted me with a huge smile and observation of he dressed all in black except for the important thing here seems to be we both had a taste for and in celebration he decided to drive us too. I chose at first glance you couldn't even. So I, I made it a couple pages and here it is. At first glance, she couldn't even get me to remember her face, and she wasn't even trying. She didn't even know that I exist, and she still doesn't know now. That first glance was at least nine years ago, even though I saw her, but she didn't see me. I wasn't even 12 yet. She was around seven or eight. It couldn't be until just a few months back that I would actually notice her again and realize that she had somehow been brought back. Not necessarily to me, but to many others as well. I didn't even know her name, and yet I did remember something very effective that had left a lasting impression. Sometimes she had said that I didn't even realize, something she had said that I didn't even realize that she had been the one to say, which is what left the impression, for the record. I have revisited that faithful, faithful day ever since I rediscovered her and learned to appreciate her for different reasons. I find the serendipity of the whole matter to be very surprising in a pleasant way. I now appreciate the way I remember her back then, now even more, although I can't help but think of how she was still in obscurity then and now. There are people who know who she is, who know her name. I, on the other hand, am just as obscure now as I am or was then. The passages of time take people down different roads that are not necessarily just what they didn't expect, but what others didn't expect either. For people like her, they work out for the best. I hope the same for myself tonight, someday. I hope that I will go down the same road and that I can have or gain the same notoriety as her. Come the day that happens, I hope others will know who I am and she will know me too. Doesn't seem like much, but oh well. Also, uh, let me tell you a little story from when I was a kid. It was like 97, 98 when this happened. I think it was 98. I was in a Brooks pharmacy in Worcester. It was formerly a Maxwell Drugs, now it's a Rite Aid pharmacy. And uh, what they used to do is they had this shelf where they put up they put up video cassette cases uh, for movies that they would rent out to customers. And then the customers would take them out in a clear plastic case. Where you could only see the title of the film. You couldn't really see anything else. And the tape itself as well. I don't have a visual representation, unfortunately, but you, you get what I'm, you get what I'm referring to, and the, what I noticed one day, I was about, I was, it was 98 or 97, I was about six years old, I noticed this picture, this, this, this cover of a movie called The Smile Like Yours, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, of this face of this cute little baby, probably a boy wearing green sunglasses, uh, smiling and laughing. Uh, a man's face is in, what, in the left lens. A woman's face is in the right lens. 
And just from that image, I wanted to see the movie because I thought it'd be something I'd really like. The picture is false advertising for the record because it turns out that, well, I found out the movie was rated R. My mom and I, and she said she wouldn't take it out for me because I'm not old enough to see an R-rated movie, obviously. And I remember I forgot about it for a while until I finally remember it again, I tracked down the film and finally watched it so I could finally fulfill that whole notion. And it turns out, well the film, uh, film's dumb. It is. The movie folks, and actually the, the picture is false advertising like I said, because the, the film itself focuses on uh, a couple a married couple who want a child and so they go through numerous attempts at trying to conceive the child and they're not successful any of those times and it seems to start to become an obsession to the wife and for the record the husband's played by Greg Kinnear the wife is played by Lauren Hawley and they uh, they end up heading to a fertility fertility clinic in order to try and figure out the issue, issue. And she also has him tested, his semen tested without his knowledge, so that she can determine if there's anything wrong with him, as opposed to anything being wrong with her. And they find out that, like, he has late swimmers. Uh, not, not late swimmers, lazy swimmers. That don't go to the egg so quickly or quickly enough they don't move fast enough to the egg and or they don't even get there at all <sighs> yeah so they go through all kinds of testing they take his semen try and do it in vitro and they're doing it with it it continues in this montage in which like the pipe that they're using or something gets longer and longer each time and <laughs> it's somewhat funny at the same time and the thing is, it's an interesting idea, but it's not a smart movie. It's not smartly written. And also, it's it's like the whole thing is filmmaking 101 as well. Then we got other characters in the mix as well. We got Joan Cusack playing Lauren Holly's friend. And we got this actor, I can't remember his name, playing Greg Kinnear's friend. Uh, this guy who... Greg Kinnear's a construction worker. Lauren Holly's a perfume saleswoman or something and we got Christopher McDonald who I I enjoy in films even when he's I, I, I he's one of those actors where I don't like seeing him play a bad guy even though he's a good plays a good bad guy uh, because he seems so likable first ever movie I saw him in was leave it to beaver and he played a like he played a good guy obviously he played Ward Cleaver and so he, Christopher McDonald's is in it. He plays a uh, salesman who's asking Lauren Holly uh, for, but he's negotiating with Lauren Holly and Joan Cusack about uh, what he can sell, the, a kind of deal in which, like, how to sell the perfume, how to make it, how to sell sell to the public, and what the costs would go about as. And we got. Also, Jill Hennessy playing an architect who is working with Greg Kinnear and eventually comes to the point where she tries to seduce him. Yeah, so the fact is, like I said, this is a, the, the image on the cassette is manipulating in the way that it deceives, it, it, probably for a post or two, deceives audiences into trying to make it, trying to get them to go see it. So that doesn't seem right to me at all, in that sense, because, and not to mention, you're going to try and gain a younger audience, it seems like you're pulling in a younger audience too with that image, that's not the kind of, Im you, you don't want to pull in younger audiences to this movie, especially if it's not age appropriate for them, I mean, it's a very harmless film, but at the same time it deals with subject material that's obviously not uh, harmless enough for a PG-13 film, so with... Not to mention the fact that so much of this film is also very generic as well. Greg Kinnear is generic. 
He plays a likable character, but he's generic. And Lauren Holly, the way her character becomes, like, so incredibly obsessed with the idea of having a child. It seems like she wants it more than he, he does at this point. Or rather, like, he's going along with it just because she wants it so much. And he... She, what she does is one point, this is the point where she lost me as someone who was following her. She tosses out all of his, uh, all of his like, briefs and replaces them all with boxer shorts, even though he doesn't like boxer shorts. That tells me she's getting a little stir-crazy, and obviously <laughs> it's, it makes it hard to follow her at that point in time. So, like I said, so, the, the film is a surprisingly good soundtrack. The, the very reliable Diane Warren pulls out a uh, surprise, pulls out a love song that shares the same title as the film. Uh, that's performed by Natalie Cole. And basically, the film the, the film is harmless. I mean, I I wouldn't have recommended people to go see it in theaters, and I wouldn't recommend them to see it on video or DVD. Uh, I give the movie a C. That's my grade for it. It just, it, and like I said, a lot of it seems like I've seen it before. Not to mention that a nurse who works with Greg Kinnear at the fertility clinic, getting him, giving him the treatment, and trying to get him to uh, be able to get those little swimmers into a cup as well, she seems to get far too personal and violate too much of that space that she shouldn't violate. Violate. It seems like she's showing. She's maybe getting too involved with this. I mean, I know these people are supposed to get involved to a certain level, but at the same time, there's a point where you gotta say, "That's that's far enough. That's that's too much." Yeah, and I, whenever I talk about a movie, I'll, I'll talk about what my grade is for it. Like I didn't me I didn't mention that I thought that with my grade for The Dark Knight Rises, I I give it an a minus. That's my grade for it. And I didn't really discuss the plot of the film, but I discussed mainly the ending, which a lot of people wonder, waited and wondered about before seeing the film, and they probably still do that now as well. Plus, with that, uh, I have other, a couple other things I wanted to quickly go over as well. I have I have a quick little request I want to throw out there for those who watch How to Rock. Uh, I wanted to tell her to request, request to submit to Buscarino if she's watching. Like, I wanted her to pay a little tribute to Molly Garfunkel. If you've ever heard Whitney Houston, the late, great Whitney Houston's uh, Academy Award nominated song, she didn't write it, uh, but she did perform the heck out of it. Uh, Run to You, which was from the movie The Bodyguard, released back in 1992. You'd, uh, you'd think about Molly Garfunkel from How to Rock. That song surprisingly has a lot of there's certain aspects that have surprising depth to the character that we probably haven't gotten to explore yet on the show. So with... You should de she should definitely consider doing a cover of that song at some point. So like, maybe we could we could almost like hear Molly singing it. In that sense. Like, opening up something personal that she di we haven't really seen before. Or something along the lines of that whether David M. Israel decides to explore that aspect or not. I'm sure he'll make the character... He, he's not going to just make the character a like, selfish antagonist throughout the entire series. He'll develop some kind of depth toward her. And I had another thing I wanted to throw out there. Uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of all the 90s shows on Nick and someone who enjoyed, who loves Hey Arnold as I'm sure many, many other people love it. Uh, I have some chapter books. They, they made about eight chapter books. Four of them ended up being TV specials before or after the fact. I don't know for certain. And then four of them didn't end up episodes of the show at all. Uh, and then I also have Good Burger to Go, which is a uh, sequel that was written as a book to the 19, hit 1997 movie that has remained a cult to this day. So I'll... If anybody wants me to like read those or something to, for one of my blogs, or something, I'll I'll give that a shot and see how it goes. I I hope I hope this video was more informative than the others, and I definitely think that I'm going to be generating a lot more interest now 
I'll, I'll come up with better things to discuss, better things to talk about throughout, more appealing things. I'll see you guys next time, whenever that may be. Bye-bye.